All right, what's up, what's up? Um, this video is about how to automate a third party plugin. Um, there's still some questions on how to do it. So I'm just gonna go over a, another plugin and show you guys how you can actually automate it. It's, it's not as straightforward um, when you're trying to do it. I think that's where some of the frustration is coming into play. So what I did was I just put a regular, not even regular, but a dope drum beat. I don't know why I call it regular, but it's what it is. So we got a drum beat going. I'm not messing with any of this at all. You know, I'm not doing any filter automation, anything where we would like standardly do things. Like if I wanted to uh, automate this filter, I would click on the robot icon. This little guy right here. Click filter. Then I get this here, which is letting me know like, hey, I can move this filter knob on and off. And whenever you see something shaded in purple, that lets you know that you created an automation of that. So it'll give you like a little check mark letting you know, hey, you're purple. So you did something to that. So if I want to reset that, hit reset. Now, when it comes to the plugin itself, um, one I'm using right now is the one I'm going to put in there is called Pocket Dimension. It's a kind of wild out there plugin. Um, it's actually free as well. And so uh, what this does, it will really mangle up this uh, drum pattern. The minute I click on this. Yeah, it'll take it in some really wild directions. So you might want to do something like that, where you want to automate it, where this last bar, you go like this. And then it gets out. Now, when you click on this robot icon and you try to click any knob here, as you can tell, nothing shows up here. It just stays on filter. So you're like, how in the heck can I automate this? So the way you do it is you go to the robot icon normally as you would, you know, make sure you click on the robot. You have to go to the effects tab that you have down here for your master channel. And more times than not, it's going to have it listed with the effect name. And then you're going to get the parameters here. So right now it's not set up where if you click on a knob or a button that's present on the, on the plugin, it'll automatically change this. You have to go in and decide like, hey, I wanna change this X axis. So now I have the ability to do that. I'm gonna change the automation type. So now I can move this up and down. And right now I'm changing the position of this uh, Anubis third eye kind of thing going. So when I play, you're gonna see this move. See how it's moving across like that because I'm automating this X axis as well as the Y axis. I'm gonna start moving this around a little bit. And I think that's where kind of the confusion is happening because you're, you're thinking that if you click on the knob, this would show and it, because it doesn't, it would then, you know, let you know, make you feel like, oh, I can't adjust anything. But it's really, you have to kind of go into specific detail and know what you want to change. So for like this one in particular, there's not a button that I'm like, where can I actually have it where the eyeball just moves around or it actually goes into what's called portal mode where when I click on it, actually press onto it, that'll happen. I had to find out that to do that, I had to actually automate this section called inner portal. So now when I make these kind of automation points, it's going to automatically do it. So now this thing is going to go X and Y. And it's colored here too. Like I changed the, uh, something with the X, Y axis as well. And I also automated the inner portal. So now when I play this, it's going to freely do all these things because I told it to. Very interesting plugin, I know, I know. But yeah, that's how you can automate um, a plugin. Now, 
you can run into some challenges with this, especially if you have a plugin that has a lot of parameters. Um, as an example, one that I've had run into before is a uh, serum. That one can be uh, interesting, so to speak. I'll just load it up as an example here. So if you don't know what serum is, it's a uh, VST synth. So we have that. And if I click on the robot icon, click on here. Normally it will be, my apologies, if I use serum effects, which is serum within serum, I know. Oh no, my apologies. I don't even have to do that. See, I'm messing up here too. So at the top, we have serum and these are all the parameters you can adjust. And I know what you're thinking. Wow, that's a lot of stuff to go through. Which, yes, that is that is the case. So what I had to do was, and I'm, I'm thinking in the future this will get adjusted, where I just click on a knob and this changes to that. So that makes it a lot easier because right now you have to really memorize what button goes to what. So I, on one of my plugins, I would literally write down on paper like, okay, this specific parameter, like say this cutoff right here, that specific parameter is this one here. This one here. And you had kind of have to like memorize where it's at. So you kind of hope that the parameter you're trying to adjust isn't all the way down here because it would probably drive you crazy. But that's kind of been the workaround for me when it comes to something like that. So again, um, you can adjust most third party plugins. Most of them that I've used, I haven't had any issues with the ability to do that. It's just you have to kind of remember what parameter is what. And then I literally just um, would open the plugin go one bar and then just mess with different parameters, loop it and see if the specific knob I wanted to adjust would happen. So example, this void knob right here, I'm just going to loop this for a bar and to do that. Use double click. Then I'm going to go here. I have the void parameter selected. I'm just going to move this up and down and then I'm going to see if this moves. And we can see that it moves. So I was doing that. So do you have to do that for everything? No, but it definitely helps if you want to know what is doing what. Because right now you can't just click on this and now it becomes void. You have to go in there and find it. So if you guys have any questions in regards to that or anything else Serato Studio related, you know, let me know. Here to help. You guys have a wonderful day. Peace.